Oh my gosh, it just started to snow outside. <laughs> we are on day 12 of our Craftmas videos and I had planned on showing you at least one of the accessories for my sweater, but unfortunately I ran out of blue yarn so I have to wait until some more of that arrives. However, in the meantime, I thought that we would use a 1950s ski suit pattern to make a matching pair of ski pants for my lovely ski sweater. One of you mentioned this in my other videos, but I actually forgot to light my candle for day 11 last time of Craftmas. So I'm gonna light both of the last candles today. So day 11 was sandalwood. Ah, oh, comforting to me. I love the smell of sandalwood. And day 12, the last day is peach. It smells fruity and fresh and delicious. So I'm very excited. It's gonna be such a cozy day. We're gonna light some candles, enjoy the snowfall, and just have a lovely Christmas Eve. <laughs> I bought a sewing pattern from 1957 for a ski set. It is a teenager size 10, so when I bought it, I knew that I would need to make a lot of alterations in order to make it fit me, but I did want to get a 1950s ski pants to go together with my sweater. When I look at 1950s ski outfits, I see a lot of sweaters worn with these types of ski pants. And like I said, I'm not gonna go, you know, downhill skiing in this whole completed look because I, that's, I'm just asking to get hurt. But I do wanna go and do something outdoorsy. So I did want to sew myself a pair of ski pants. Now, these pattern pieces need a lot of alterations. So I've actually been following along with Claude Miss where she's been altering a pattern and I am not an expert. So if you wanna understand that better, go follow Bianca at The Closet Historian, go follow Claude at Retro Claude. They know what they're talking about and they're the ones who I use for reference when I do any kind of sewing. So for this one, I first traced the original pattern pieces onto parchment paper. That's all I have available and it worked out pretty well. The only thing is if you need to make alterations where you cut the pieces and make them smaller or bigger, Tape doesn't really stick to them because it's meant to be non-stick. So I traced out all the pattern pieces and I measured both myself and the bits of the patterns and tried to determine exactly where I needed to add some length. Um, I was gonna say also take out some length, but <laughs> nope, teenager size 10 definitely needs to be made bigger in every direction <laughs> in order to fit me. I used a flat sheet for my mock-up fabric. Something that I didn't realize isn't as common in the US, but from what I know, I think it's in Northern Europe for sure, we each have our own set of covers. So we don't share sheets if it's if you're sleeping two people to a bed. That is just a nightmare and it would be so cold. So instead we have two separate set of sheets. So we never use the flat sheet when we buy a set of sheets here in the US. And so I always save all of those and my mom always saves all of those for me to use as mock-up fabric, which is perfect. That's how I made my mock-up for this pattern. I put it on and I definitely needed to make quite a few adjustments. I wasn't able to make as many adjustments as I wanted because I actually realized too late in the evening that my sewing machine had a broken needle and I couldn't find a replacement at home. So I had to run out to get a replacement needle to be able to sew. So knowing that I didn't have a lot of time to turn this around, I did my one mock-up with hand sewing, just like really big basting stitches and tried that on, tried to mark out what alterations I needed. And then I cut it out of my final fabric. And the final fabric that I chose is a uh, kettle boiled wool or not i don't think it's necessarily kettle boiled but it's definitely boiled wool so usually what you use for coats and things and it almost has a little bit of texture on the top i just love how it looks i've gotten this wool once before for a different project that i can't remember right now i think oh it was to make a coat i made a green coat out of it and i loved it so i chose a navy blue this time and i used the altered ish mock-up uh, pieces of fabric to cut out the leg pieces and thank goodness i had just enough with in my fabric to cut them out. I couldn't fit the entire bit of wool that I had bought into my luggage to get here, so I had to cut it off and I didn't have the time to estimate how much I needed, so I just kind of cut some off. And I am so lucky that it just, it just fit <laughs> the pattern pieces that I needed to. I sewed those together because at this by this point I had gotten a replacement sewing needle for my sewing machine and I realized that I, it definitely needed quite a few more alterations. So some awkward uh, crotch area alterations. I don't know if I did it right. I just try to keep in mind that like if you see um, vertical folds, it means there's too much fabric. And if you see horizontal folds, it's not enough fabric. So I just kind of pinched and pinned and then tried to mark up 
those alterations in a in my like pencil and re-sew it. And you might notice I'm just using white thread on a very long stitch length to kind of redo the mock-up but with my finished fabric and that way it would make it easier for me to undo the stitches because it's so contrasting against the blue of my fabric if I needed to change anything again from when I sewed it. And I retried it on and at this point I was finally happy with how it fit. So I switched to my blue sewing thread that matches my pants and I sewed them together Although I didn't get to the waistband um, or the hemming of it just because at this point it was quite late at night and I was worried that I would start making mistakes. That was all I did for the first day of sewing and then I went back at it the next morning. It's the next day, it's December 24th, so for those of you who celebrate Merry Christmas, at least in Germany, today is the day that we celebrate Christmas. Um, and I am nearly done with my ski pants. I did decide to add some elastic in the waist to kind of help hold it up because it'll be elastic of the feet. I know I can wear a belt, but I always find it more comfortable being able to have a little bit of stretch in the waistband. So what I have to finish today is sewing on the waistband with the belt tabs, uh, hemming the pants and adding, I decided to do a lovely contrasting red bias binding for the bottom of the pants and the elastic loops to go around the bottom of the feet. So we are nearly done. <laughs> A fantastic day what a wonderful sleigh ride the pants worked out so so well I just made some homemade Eierlecker it's still warm so zum wohl again if you celebrate Merry Christmas and I will see you all again very very soon to finish off the little hood and bonnet and my mittens I don't know if it'll be before the new year but I will see you then bye